Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. Um, this is now question number five from the Solomon CP4 or C4 collection. Um, and this question is also number nine from my end of topic worksheet, integration one from my P4 course. Now, this question here is about differential equations. Integration, differential equations it says a bath is filled with hot water which is allowed to cool. The temperature of the water is theta degrees Celsius after cooling for T minutes, and the temperature of the room is assumed to remain constant at 20 degrees Celsius. Given that the rate at which the temperature of the water decreases is proportional to the difference in temperature between the water and the room, write down a differential, differential equation connecting theta and T. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is, first of all, the rate at which the temperature of the water decreases, the rate of decrease of temperature means with respect to time okay so theta is the temperature and t is the time so what they're telling us is d theta dt the rate of change of temperature in the room d theta dt is equal to um is proportional to the difference in temperature between the water and the room okay so there's going to be a constant okay and then you're going to have the difference between the water and the room temperature. Now, if you put the temperature of the room first, okay, theta, and then the temperature of the water first, take away the temperature of the room, you're going to have theta minus 20, all right? You have to put a minus here, okay? Because, of course, this is going to be um, something which is a positive value, and we know that the, the, the temperature is decreasing. The temp is, temperature is decreasing. So it has to be a negative rate of decrease. It's going to be, have a negative gradient. Now, if you put theta minus 20, theta is going to be starting off more than 20. It's hot, and then it's going to cool down to getting towards 20 degrees Celsius, the room temperature. Okay, so you have to write that. You have to put minus in front of it. If, however, you put 20 minus theta, the difference between the room and the... And the and the water, then you wouldn't have to put the minus k on the outside, okay? Because that would be a negative value, okay? So that's one little point there that's important for us to realize. So I'm going to put theta minus 20 because this is higher than that, and I'll put a minus outside to show that it's a decreasing. It's a negative rate of, um, you know, negative rate, basically, all right? And the k is there because it's proportional to, okay? So you'd normally put d theta dt is proportional to minus theta minus 20 like that okay but that's fine now the other point here is oh that's basically the that's basically part a that's part a done now we're going to go on to part b now part b says here given also that the temperature of the water is in initially 37 degrees and that is 36 degrees after cooling for four minutes so we know that when t equals zero initially the temperature is 37 degrees when T equals 4, the temperature is 36 degrees, and we got to find the temperature after 10 minutes. So when T equals 10, we got to find what theta is. Okay, we've got to find the temperature for 10 minutes. So what we can do here is we've got this differential equation, which is d theta dt equals minus k times theta minus 20. Now, what we're going to do is solve this differential equation. Um, we need to find, basically, the value of k, all right, which we can do using these two pieces of information. And once we found the value of k, we can then find theta when t equals 10. So what first thing we've got to do is we've got to um, solve this differential equation by getting rid of the d theta dt. We had end up with theta equals some function of t. That's what we have to end up with. Right, so what we can do is we can integrate both sides. This is how some people, this is how I prefer to, to think about it. Integrate both sides with respect to t because when you're solving equations, what we do to one side, we do to the other. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to put minus k because there's a constant outside, and I'm going to have theta minus 220, and I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to t. Now, when I do this, when I write it like this, what I have to be, um, What's going to happen now is this This is going to cancel with that. Okay, so you have d theta on this side and dt on that side. Now, what we have to do is separate the variables. To separate the variables such that 
on this side you have the d thetas on this side you have this side you have all the theta terms this side you have all the t terms now there's no t terms but there's a theta minus 20 here so if i divide both sides by theta minus 20 this side you'll end up with 1 over theta minus 20 d theta and on this side there's no terms here t terms so i'll put just minus k times or times the integral of dt okay now from this stage here there's different ways you could proceed okay some ways you can proceed is you can integrate like as an indefinite integral put plus c in there and try to find the value of c and then try to find the value of k using these bits of information i like to do the following what i'm going to do is i'm going to find the value of k right away okay by using these limits these this pair of limits that i know that will leave me if i use these limits right away then that will leave me with only k unknown because i'll have values to put for theta and for t the only thing i won't have is k so that will lead me to finding the value of k kind of directly so how do we do this well i'm going to put when t equals zero theta is 37 and when t is equal to 4 theta equals 36. if i integrate this now using these limits the only thing that I'll have unknown is the k. And I can then use the k to find out what theta is when t equals 10, as we'll see. So the first step now is for us to integrate this expression. Okay, so when I integrate this, this side, now this is 1 over theta minus 20 with respect to theta. So to integrate this, I have to use the lin function, right? Because I can't just write theta minus 20 to the power of minus 1 add 1 to the power, get power of 0. This is like 1 over x type of um, reciprocal like this, which when you integrate it gives you lin of the modulus of x. It's the same kind of situation here. So this is going to be lin of the modulus of theta minus 20. Okay, now the limits here are 36 and 37. And here I'm going to have, well, minus k times, and this is just going to be t, and the limits here are 4 and 0. So now what you'll notice is the only thing I don't know is k. If I put these values in, I'm going to have lin of 37 minus, uh, th minus 20, okay, which is a positive value, minus the lin of, th that's 36 minus 20, lin of 37 minus 20 equals minus k times, and this is going to give me 4 minus 0, which is just 4. Okay, so... I've got this is going to be 16 minus 17, so that's the lin of 16 minus the lin of 17 is equal to minus 4k. All right, so if I want to find what k is, I can say k is going to be basically, if I multiply both sides by minus 1, you have lin of 17 minus lin of 16 equals 4k. Okay, so we can say that lin of 17 over 16 divided by 4. So a quarter lin of 17 over 16 equals k. So I now know what k is. k is a quarter. I'll leave it in this exact form for now. And we might, we'll need to use it later on. So that's the value of k. So now I know what k is. I can, I also know I want to find what theta is when t is equal to 10. I know that theta when t is equal to 0 is 37. Theta is 37 when t is equal to 0. As I told us in the question, initially 37 degrees. So I can now use these pair of values to find what I'm looking for, which is theta when t is 10. So I can use the same integral that I found here. I can just use the same integral and just have these as our limits instead. So I have lin of theta minus 20. Okay. And this is, now this is going to be um, 30, this is going to be, let me just put these in first, minus k times t. Now this is going to be, when t is 0, theta is 37, and we want to find what theta is when t is 10. Okay, so I can just do the same thing. This is going to give me the lin of theta minus 20 minus the lin of 17, which is 37 minus 20, is equal to minus k times 10. Minus k times 10. Okay, 
So I can work out what theta is. I can say lin of theta minus 20 is equal to lin 17 minus 10k. Okay, so I can say that um, theta minus 20 is equal to e to the power of lin 17 minus 10 times k. So theta is 20 plus e to the power of lin 17 minus 10 times k. All right, so <clears throat> I can just put that value in from here. I know what k is. So if I take my value of k, so I have 20 plus e to the, whoops, 20 plus, I have e to the power of lin 17 minus 10 times k, which is this. So it's 10 times, so it's going to be um, 10 times a quarter, which is 2.5, 2.5 lin of 17 over 16. Which gives me 34.609, 34.609 degrees. So 34.6 degrees. So there's the answer to part B. It says find to 3SF, that's 3SF. Okay, good. So there's different ways that people do this. I mean, I like to use the limits here, so I don't have to put plus C. But one way you could have done it is not put any limits, and you end up with, you know, an expression with plus C in it. Then you substitute the value of T equals 0 and T equals 37 to find the value of C. And once you found the value of C, then you substitute the values of um, 4 and 36 to find the value of K. Then you find the value of K. Then you can use uh, the values of um, uh, basically 10 and find what theta is. Okay. I like to do this using the limit so I don't have to put plus C. Um, whichever way you want to do it is fine. I, I just like to use this method here. Okay, when t equals 0, theta is 37. When t equals 4, theta equals 36. The only thing you won't know is k. Find what k is. Once you find what k is, when theta equals 0, t is 37. When, theta, when t is 0, theta is 37. When t is 10, we want to find what theta is. Okay, and we know the value of k. I didn't write it out, but I used it until, you know, I used it at the end. I know what it is. I don't want to write that, keep writing that out, okay, every time. But I, I just kept it in, in the calculator and then used it at the end for this answer. So there's part B done, okay? That's a very common type of question when you got differential equations. And then part C says, find to the nearest second how long a child should wait before getting into the bathroom. Advice suggests that the temperature of the water should be allowed to cool to 33 degrees Celsius before a child gets in. Okay, so we've got everything we need here already. Okay, we've got the differential equation that we need, which is this thing here. Okay, which I'll just take over to the other side. And that's what we need, basically. I'm just going to change the limits, that's all. Let me put this here somewhere. All right, so what I need to do is just change these limits, okay, according to the question. But we know that at 0, it's 37. We can use that. But we want to know how long, so we're going to find t this time when the temperature is 33. That's all that I have to do now. So... We've got everything we need here. So we can say that um, the lin of, and we're going to have theta minus 20, or 33 minus 20. 33 minus 20, which is 13, minus the lin of, again, 17, equals minus k times t. Zero is in there, so you're going to have minus k times t. So we got the lin of 13 over 17, equals minus k times t so t is going to be equal to um, minus 1 over k times the lin of 13 over 17 which is the same as saying um, 1 over k times the lin of 17 over 13 same thing okay so t is equal to so let's take our value of k a value of k is all this, which is, it was 
1 over 4. Let me take it from the other side. A value of k was 1 over 4 lin 17 over 16. So you got 1 over k. So you got 1 over... Um, quarter times a lin of 17 over 16. Okay, um, times the lin of 17 over 13. There we go. That gives us 17.7, so 17.700. So it says find the time to the nearest second. So this is in terms of, um, I think this was minutes, wasn't it? T is in minutes. Yes. Okay, so we're going to take this time and change it into seconds. So T is going to be 17 minutes. And we have 0 0.7 times 60. So we're going to take this, take away 17 from this and multiply this by 60. That gives you 42, seven, 42 seconds. 42 seconds. So 17 minutes and 42 seconds is the time that a, should, a child should wait before getting into the buff. So it's just basically now using the same thing that we solved for, except this time we want to find what t is when theta is 33. Okay, so there's the answer to part C. Okay, so once you've integrated it like this, you can put the limits in as you wish to find whatever you need. Okay, you have the initial temperature and temperature, initial temperature when time equals zero, you know the temperature. You can find the temperature at a certain time, um, or sorry, you can find the temperature for a certain time, or you can find the time for a certain temperature, which is what this one is asking us to find. And there's the answer to part C, and that concludes this question, number nine from the um, end of topic worksheet, and also question number um whatever it was i think it was question number f five from the solomon c papers um thank you for watching other questions from the solomon c collection can be found in this playlist as i answer them other questions from this endotopic worksheet six integration one can be found in this playlist here um, other questions that you might want to watch from differentiation, from, sorry, from integration of P4 can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.